Hey guys! I'm here to show you how to take a Vroid model and convert it for MMD. So the first thing, this is the Vroid model I've made for the Vocaloid Sarah, courtesy of Yamaha not giving their uh, characters designs. Um, it's kind of, it's got a lot of transparency going on and that'll be relevant later, but you can see how it looks in Vroid itself. Obviously, this is not a tutorial on how to use Vroid or how to create with Vroid. You're going to have to go someplace else for that. But uh, obviously, the first step is going to be exporting it to a VRM. So this is the export as VRM window. We're going to... You can do whatever... I recommend not reducing any polygons, not reducing anything. Just, just leave it the way it is. But you should have delete transparent meshes checked. Always. So then we click our little export button and it lets us fill in all kinds of stuff here. And the stuff that you fill in here is actually going to end up in the little window that pops up when you load the model into MMD. So yeah, just fill it out with whatever you want, export it, save it to wherever. It's going to take a bit to export the model. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to... Uh, we're going to use a program called Vroid2PMX. I've linked that in the description of this video. Uh, so open Vroid2PMX. It's in Japanese, don't worry about it. This is where we load our model. So I am going to load the one that I've made for this tutorial. And you just click this button and it runs. This is going to be the path that it outputs to. Yeah, it may take a while to run depending on how good your computer is. Alright, so once it's done running, we're actually going to use a different program now. This one is called PMX Taylor, and this is also linked in the description. It's by the same person who made that last one. So we're going to open PMX Taylor. We're going to load our model. We're going to load the model that output. So we're going to load the mo output model from... Uh, be right to PMX. Load the model, the, the PMX model that it output. We're gonna click over into this tab, and it's gonna run for a little bit. Don't worry about this. <laughs> That's just loading up the model and stuff. So what we want to do is we want to click this little button, and it's gonna load up all the physics that it exported from Vroid. So we we're gonna check every single one of them, and hit OK. Give it a second to load those. Alright, cool. So now that that's loaded, we're gonna go back over to that first tab, and we're gonna click the button, and it's gonna run just like before. This is how you apply the Vroid physics to the output MMD model. Alright, so now we're going to navigate to the output folder of the PMX, and you'll notice it's created a second PMX file, and this is gonna be the PMX file with the physics. We're not quite done yet, uh, because, as you'll soon see, as although Vroid to PMX is an excellent tool, it doesn't entirely get things all the way correctly. Namely, with regards to the materials not drawing in the right order. As you can see, her belt, the transparency on her belt is clipping through her pants and showing the skin underneath. Obviously, for obvious reasons, this is not desirable. So, in order to fix this, we are going to go into... The material tab click this little m here to open this uh refined masking window and basically we're going to just we've got all our materialists here we're just gonna uncheck and recheck things until we find the one that we want so if we can find there we go there's her pants so we want these three materials here, because this is the front of the pants, this is the back of the pants, and these are the, the edge material I created to make up for the fact that it's a transparent material. That's number 36, so we're going to tap back over into this window, find those same materials. Which are these, and we're going to use these arrows to move them above everything in this list until we get to the facial parts. 
Now, as you can see, when we tab back over into this window and it recalculates, now the belts are drawing correctly. You want to repeat this for basically everything on the model. So you're going to want to make sure that the jacket is drawing on top of the top and it looks like it is. You want to make sure that, like, there's a little bit of cutting here with the leg warmers and the shoes, so you're going to want to fix that in a similar fashion by finding those materials. Basically, what you want is you want things that are supposed to draw on top of other things should be at the bottom of the list, which is why we've moved the pants up to the top of the list, because it's underneath everything. There we go. And now... Now we've more or less fixed all of the weird clipping issues. So now, the second step is to high to delete bones and meshes that are not useful. So like these bones down here are for a skirt that doesn't exist. And if we go into mode weight, always do this before you edit any bones at all. Then we go up here and we make sure that only bones is selected and we select these bones, you'll notice that, like, say if I, if I select, like, other bones, the model changes to show what's weighted to those bones, but since nothing is weighted to these bones, we can safely remove them. Always, always, always check to make sure that nothing is weighted to those bones before you remove them. And then we go back into solid mode, and the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of material parts that are not useful to avoid them clipping through things that they shouldn't clip through. So I've clicked this little four square up here, which opens the multi-view mode. Uh, and so as you can see, it's showing the model from the top, the front, the side. You can use these buttons to flip it around. But these are perfect views without any sort of um, fiddly bits because of the viewing angle. So what we're going to do now is, since she's got legs underneath these pants, what we don't we we that is taking up space that we don't want. So what you want to do is this button this button shows all the materials. We're going to uncheck the body and then we're going to click the R to reverse that so that now only the body is is shown. Before you do this, make sure that only the V is selected so that you're only editing vertices. And we're just going to select all of her legs and press shift delete remove the selected vertices. And so now, if we go back into all, you'll notice that, like, it you basically can't tell the difference. And that's because we've removed only what is not covered by her pants. And so we're going to repeat this process with her arms and hands, and other parts of the body that may or may not be clipping through the, the mesh, or just generally taking up file space and not being useful, like the back of her head. And so once you're done with the body, you can move on to other materials, like, for example... Her pants are still drying underneath these leg warmers, and we don't actually need them to, so we can find that material. Make sure you're doing all three parts of that material. Reverse. And then you can delete the parts of the material that are not being seen. That's too much. There we go. Um, and you'll also notice what we when we did earlier, when we unchecked this big leg warmer, there was another small leg warmer underneath it, so we can get rid of that at this phase through the same method. And basically the point of this is to prevent clipping issues and also to reduce file size, because if it's not being visible, it doesn't actually need to be there. The other the only other thing we could possibly do is if you right if you tab into your your main window, you can right click inside the list and hit batch name editor. And this is a good way to edit the names of your materials, your bones, whatever else so that you can actually keep track of them, which is particularly useful if like say you're using Raycast and you need to actually know what parts of this model are which parts for material um, effects and things of that nature. It's also useful to hit, in the bone tab specifically, drop down list bone, edit, Japanese name to English name, use dictionary. Yes. And that is going to fill in the standard English names for these instead of the slightly strange ones that Vroid to PMX has fit, fill it in. Then we hit go and it'll update all of that in. You can repeat that same process for the morphs. 
and for the display panel. You can also use this to edit in bulk names of things in general, and it's generally very useful for that. Then all we need to do is file, save. Make sure you save it in the same directory as the base model, because otherwise you're going to have to make sh move this texture file and whatever else. Go ahead and change the name to something like Sarah Cleaned, I guess. Save. And that's it. You're done. You can now load that up into Mika Mika Dance with uh, a normal motion, and it should work more or less the way that we anticipate it to. So we can load it with any motion, any standard motion anyways. If you're using like a Project Diva rip or something, there are special steps to edit your model, and I can link to a tutorial for that in the description too. But yeah, you. so we've loaded the motion for change by credits on the screen. Uh, and as you can see, it is working perfectly normally. <laughs> So, yeah, that's really all you need to do to convert a V-Roid model to MMD. Um, there may need to be other edits depending on the transparency of your textures or whatever else. Or if you want to modify the physics yourself, if you know how physics in MMD works. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's the basic process of it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Good luck!